Why do we suffer? Having read multiple books on Stoicism, Buddhism, but also studied the works of Michael Singer, Eckhart Tolle, I've come to see that there are mainly two reasons why we suffer. But before I dive into this, let's explore what's behind our suffering. What does it even mean to suffer? As the saying goes, we can't avoid pain, but we can avoid suffering. Most of the quotes go something like, pain is unavoidable, suffering is optional. What does this mean? When you're in a situation that doesn't really suit you, <laughs> that you don't really enjoy or appreciate, there might be some mental or emotional pain, sometimes there might be some physical pain, but suffering comes from avoidance. Suffering comes from not wanting this to be the actual reality. If you look at the works of Eckhart Tolle, maybe you've read The Power of Now, he talks about our relationship with the present moment. And sometimes, if you're not in a state of higher levels of consciousness, you might go against the present moment. So you might see the present moment as an obstacle or an enemy, and typically this is when you start to suffer. Very easy example is if maybe you're in the queue of a supermarket and then you start to think you wish it would go faster, why is it taking so long, you get a bit impatient. This is when you're seeing the present moment as an obstacle to your goal, which is probably to leave the supermarket with your groceries. Each time you see the present moment as an obstacle to what you want, this is when you start to suffer. So when you see the present moment as an obstacle or as an enemy, this is when inside of you there's this internal resistance and you begin to suffer. This could be on a short term when the present moment isn't what you wanted, but it can also be around your life circumstances. Think about it. Think about an area in your life where you feel some emotional suffering or resistance. Chances are that that part of your life isn't going the way you would want it to go. Tony Robbins often talks about life conditions matching the blueprint. That essentially means life conditions is your current reality, your blueprint are your expectations. So if your current reality isn't matching your expectations, you're going to start to feel a bit frustrated. Let's look at some examples here. Maybe you want to be super fit and super healthy, but the reality is that you're out of shape, you're binge eating a lot, maybe you've got a bit of a drinking habit, and that expectation that you had, that blueprint that you have of yourself being fit and healthy isn't the reality of your daily life. This leads to some suffering and inner conflict. And of course, we will discuss later in this episode what you can do about these circumstances and what you can and cannot influence. Let's take another example. Let's look at your business. Maybe you run your own company, your own business, or you're progressing up the career ladder, and you had this expectation that your business, you're already a seven-figure business, and you're not. And one that, what, what happens in those moments is that you start to feel this inner frustration because where you're at now doesn't match where you want to be. Now there's something a bit tricky here because on the one hand you want your expectations to be high, you want to have high standards because this pushes you, this gives you a drive, this gives you a vision direction. But on the other hand, if you're constantly feeling this gap, you can also get discouraged. So how do you meet in the middle? That's how. You keep that objective, that vision, you being super in shape, you running a seven figure business. And at the same time, you accept where you're now and look at incremental progress. Look at the next step you can do to go towards your vision. This takes a lot of practice. I've worked with hundreds of high achievers. They're very goal driven, they're very vision oriented and they can get discouraged because they're not there yet. And it takes a lot of practice to have these big, juicy, exciting goals, but at the same time, appreciate where you are and enjoy the journey. Now, if you're like me and you're super driven and ambitious, enjoying the journey can feel like a bit of a drag sometimes because you're not at the goal and the outcome that you want in your life and business. Therefore, it takes literal mental practice to appreciate each step, to remind yourself 
that nothing's going to happen when you reach that exciting goal. I did a whole other episode on the arrival fallacy, which is this idea that when you reach this goal, you'll finally be happy. This isn't true. And also, if you think about it, how can you go and arrive at a destination and suddenly be happy if you haven't appreciated each step of the way? It doesn't make sense because you will then have conditioned your body to feel certain emotions in each step of the journey and when you arrive at this famous destination, your body will be used to certain emotions. On the other hand, if during your journey you start to appreciate, smell the roses along the way and see, oh, this is actually interesting, or I'm learning something here, or I actually really enjoyed that, and see and feel grateful as you progress, you will then have cultivated certain emotions, so your body will be used to these emotions, so when you reach your destination, whatever that is, your seven-figure business or being super healthy and fit, you will feel as happy. And there's another important aspect here with the arrival fallacy, which is that if you don't appreciate the journey and then you finally arrive at your amazing seven-figure, eight-figure, ten-figure business or super healthy fit body, you will have pinned so much hope on this being the solution to finally make you happy that you will be disappointed because you haven't reached those emotions. And we often think that an external result will give us this internal feeling that we want. That doesn't happen. We need to cultivate and change and transform internally and it reflects externally. So it's inside out, it's not outside in, which is often the illusion that we have. So coming back to this idea of suffering. So I said there were two core elements. At the beginning here I explained the relationship that we have with the present moment, looking at Eckhart Tolle and what he talks about. And if we see it as an enemy or an obstacle, then we're more likely to suffer or be upset or not feel content. But also we looked at these famous life conditions blueprint that Tony Robbins talks about, which is our reality matching our circumstances. And then we looked at how the important part here is appreciating each step of the journey so you cultivate the emotional strength and resilience and, ah, and you feel good about your life in general, which then helps you when you do reach your goal or destination to feel good. So what are these two core elements that are linked to us suffering? The first one is aversion and the second one is clinging. And if you're familiar with a lot of these Buddhist texts, they come up time and time again. And I think it's absolutely fascinating how all of our suffering comes down to aversion and clinging. Super simple, aversion. Something happens in your life. A friend doesn't invite you to their party. That's on the mild side of things. Or someone around you that you're close to is seriously ill. That's on the more serious side of things. What happens? You start to feel aversion. I don't want this to be happening. It comes back to what we were saying with Eckhart Tolle, going against the reality, against the present moment. I don't want this to be the circumstance right now. I don't want this to be a reality. Whether it's that friend not inviting you at the party or whether it's someone in your life or yourself being ill, you suddenly feel like, I do not want this to be the case. And when you do that, you suffer. Clinging, I want more of this. I want this to stay. Maybe you're having a wonderful holiday and it's already the last day and you're thinking, oh, I don't want this to end. Clinging. <laughs> Maybe you desire a new material possession. I really want this dress or I really want this new cameo or iPhone. Clinging. <laughs> if you start to look at it, you will notice that your brain is constantly going between aversion and clinging, aversion and clinging. Because we're wired this way. We're wired to avoid the danger outside and also cling and maybe appreciate the berries so we can survive. This is literally the wiring of our brain. Now there's a way, or several ways, you can train yourself so that aversion and clinging aren't dominating the way you think and feel each and every day. Another example, for instance, let's say at work, maybe your boss or something around you, they want you to do another task, something that you really don't want to be doing. Aversion. Or maybe they compliment you, you have a wonderful day, you want more of this, clinging. I recently realized that each time I go somewhere new or exciting or fun, one of my very first thought is, maybe I could come here again. 
And once I was walking to this spa and I was going to go to this nice spa I'd never been before for an event with James Nestor, the author of Breath, super exciting event. Anyway, I was walking to the spa and as I was walking there, I thought, if it's a nice place, I'd love to go back there one day. And then I realized I hadn't even arrived there, that my brain was already thinking, maybe we should do this again. That's clinging. <laughs> So start to notice in your life, when do you have these aversions and when are you clinging? You'll notice it's all the time. That's step one. The second step is awareness, not only of clinging and aversion, but also of how it feels in your body. How do you feel when you're in that state of aversion? How do you feel when you're in that state of clinging? What is happening in your body? What are your type of thoughts that are coming up? And how does this manifest? And you'll see, that there's a mild, mild, small part of suffering. And sometimes with clinging, it's so minute and subtile, subtle that you don't notice it. For instance, when I was giving the example with going to the spa, I might not have seen this as suffering. It was just a minor clinging side. But this is because we refuse to see that life is finite, that experiences are finite and we want everything to be infinite. This is in the clinging side. And there is some suffering with the concept of things being finite. So we can overcome this by first being aware, noticing in the body, and then acceptance. And acceptance is actually a hard pill to swallow because it's one thing to say, oh, I accept that things are hard or I accept that it won't work out the way I want. It's another thing to really feel acceptance. And this comes with practice. If you have a regular meditation practice, this will help you a lot. You will see everything passes. This too shall pass, which is extremely important when it comes to the aversion side of things. And you will start to feel a little less attached. We become very attached to our circumstances, to what we want, to what we don't want, and we cling to it. I also think that aversion and clinging, they're really two sides of the same coin. <laughs> your aversion to losing something is clinging to having more of it, for example. They really go hand in hand and what they are is the ego. Now we can't totally get rid of the ego, at least this is what, what one of my coaches once told me. He used to be a monk and he told me you can't totally get rid of the ego, but you can start to notice when it's working or taking a grip on your whole psyche and psychology and being mindful of putting it on hold, telling it this too shall pass, letting it go. And I feel that when you shine the light of consciousness, this is something again Eckhart Tolle talks about a lot, when you shine the light of consciousness on these patterns, they start to lose their grip. So as you notice that you have maybe a strong aversion to something, or you're really unhappy with your current circumstances, you might notice when you shine the light of consciousness, which is simply being more aware of it, you might start to notice that this aversion, this clinging, your ego is getting a bit of a kick out of it. Oh, my, my life is so tough right now and this boss is really hard and I wish things were different and why does everything have to be so difficult? And we, we get this and deep down there's a little like, da la la. That's the ego. That's the ego getting a little kick out of, this is not what I want, but by making a big deal out of it, I feel more important. And that's the ego expressing itself. I feel more important. I feel more significant. This matters more. And it's the same with clinging or wanting more material possessions. You want that beautiful dress or that new iPhone because you think it'll make you feel more important or more significant or more interesting. So coming back to this idea of suffering, there are two core pillars, aversion and clinging. How do you overcome suffering, especially when things get really tough? It's one thing when you're not invited to that party, it's something else if you or someone you're close to is seriously ill or worse. How do you manage that suffering? Well, first of all, it helps if you can train with smaller things. Of course, the more you train your inner resilience, acceptance and letting go in smaller circumstances, the more you will have trained your mind and your body and your whole psyche to deal with bigger things. So that helps. 
that shining the light of awareness of consciousness extremely helpful with letting go seeing that it's a pattern seeing that it's the ego what i also find is extremely helpful is to see it's never outside of us but it's always within us so it's always our own thoughts about the situation that affect how we feel clear example of this is two identical situations but for two different people so they have maybe the same boss or the same workload or the the same difficulties one of them will be at peace with it and one of them will be suffering why because one person thought might be hey this is a challenge that i can rise to or i'm just doing my best and this is what matters or whatever it is that'll be one person's thoughts and the other person's thoughts might be something like this is so unfair why is everything so hard Therefore, suffering always happens within us. It's independent of circumstances. It's the circumstances seen through the filter of our thoughts. Once you know this, it might be difficult in very hard circumstances to shift your filter and shift your thoughts around it, but at least you know that it's a possibility. You can cognitively reframe the way you think to feel a bit more at peace. Okay, if none of this works, how do you get to a place of more calm, more peace and less suffering. You need to find your way towards acceptance and letting go. And I really mean find your way because the way will be different for each and every person and for each and every circumstances. In some case, it might be a matter of forgiving, forgiving someone or forgiving yourself. In another circumstance, it might be a matter of accepting that you're not as far as you'd like to be, but the way you are is still great and you're learning here. That might be one way to get to acceptance and letting go. In another case, it might be being willing to let go of that big dream or ambition because it's no longer a possibility in your life for whatever reason. And to come to terms with these, there are many, many different paths. Obviously, you can go and do a vipassana and meditate for days, journaling every single day, letting it out, all the emotions, processing it, and depending on the circumstance you're in, obviously trauma work, psychotherapy, this is the reason why all of these things exist. But the difference here is now that you have the awareness, you're trying to get to acceptance and letting go. So it's not just talking things through for the sake of talking things through. You now know that you're in this place of suffering and to get out of it, you need to find your way to acceptance and letting go. So start to ask yourself, what's one thing you can do each day that will help you to be more accepting, not just grudgingly thinking, okay, I don't have any option anyway, that's not acceptance. <laughs> Real, full acceptance of what the situation is and ask yourself, what's one thing you can do each day that will make you more accepting and that will help you to let go? And you will receive an answer. As you ask yourself this, as you journal, as you meditate and you answer, they might be, okay, I need to see a therapist about it and find my way towards acceptance. Or I need to read The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, amazing book, or The Power and Life by Eckhart Tolle and read it on a daily basis. I know people who've overcome grief just by reading Eckhart Tolle's work and being immersed in it and it changes the way they think about life. What we want to remember is the ego will constantly want to maintain this aversion and clinging and it will keep you in a place of suffering unless you actively choose to go a different route and you go towards acceptance and letting go. This is the path out of suffering. This is the way you will find peace in your circumstances, in your life, by finding your way there. And it can be a multiple different direction, but we want to get to this place of acceptance and letting go. And this will support you in extremely hard circumstances, as well as minutely hard circumstances to be more at peace and to no longer suffer. I hope this episode was useful for you. Please put in the comments what helps you when your place of suffering, what help, helps you come to peace and inner calm. I'd love to have your own insights on this and your journey. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow on Spotify. Thank you for tuning in.